Look, there's been a fair amount of confusion about who exactly is coming from overseas to play in this Tommy. Uh, who will be coming? Well, mainly it'll be Keith Moon coming to play Uncle Ernie, Andy Fairweather Lowe, who's going to play the local lad, and uh, Graham Bell, who played in the original recording and original production, will play the, instead of playing the lover, which he played originally, he's going to play uh, the narrator, which is Pete Townsend's part. And which local artists will be playing? Well, there's lots of them. I have to remember them all. There's uh, Daryl Braithwaite, who's doing Tommy, and there's Wendy Saddington, who's playing the nurse, and there's Linda George, who's playing uh, the acid queen, and there's uh, Colleen Hewitt, who's playing the mother, and Ross Wilson, who's playing cousin Kevin, and the rest of the names escape me. <laughs> <laughs> and um, in the British production, you had the London Symphony Orchestra, right. is that correct? Yeah, that's the New World Symphony, Symphony. Orchestra. Yeah. It's, it's something we actually put together with that name because we it was sort of impossible to get the any of the local symphonies on such short notice, but we actually put together the best musicians that we could find to form the symphony orchestra. It's conducted by David Meacham, who conducted the original Tommy and also is a conductor with the London Symphony. There's been a fair amount of criticism uh, in a few of the overseas reviews, anyhow, about the fact that it's not really rock and roll, it's not a rock opera. Uh, do you see it as a rock opera yourself? Well, put it this way, the roots are certainly rock, and the way the orchestra was treated was as an instrument. Uh, the idea was was to really take what the, the music was of Pete Townsend and put it in another setting. It wasn't really trying to make it rock or anything, it was just trying to, to do the best with what I saw in the music, which I did, I think. One of the problems in Australia is a lack of venues of a suitable size and uh, also venues that you can see at. Uh, you're working in Sydney anyhow at Randwick Racecourse. You've got a very large stage. How are you going to work it so the people are going to be able to see? Well, I think the stage would be so big and, and also the, the, the way the thing is going to be staged with lights and projections that it will be enjoyable. I don't think there'll be any problem as far as the sight lines. What, uh, what are the problems associated with bringing such a huge production to Australia and putting it on here? Actually, probably not as great as you think, uh, only because it's, it's being done for the one night. A lot, a lot of the organization was done before I got here. The main thing is really getting the orchestra together and the solo artists. And it's not, it's not like doing uh, a stage production in, in the real sense, because what we're really doing is a concert of the record with the addition of projections and lights. Uh, to what extent will the parts be acted out? Well, you see, that's that's really left up to the individual performer. That's a, it's it, it's not acted out in a sense of being Madame Butterfly or something like that. It's really uh, the way I've worked. It is that to get, leave them to their own interpretation of it. It's obviously a mammoth task selecting Australian artists to perform in the production. How do you find the music scene here? I think the music scene here is great. Actually, I think it's really just about ready to explode. I think the main thing in Australia is that the radio doesn't really realize what they have here to offer in artists. They're always looking to overseas records. Personally, I feel from what I've seen here that it's as good as any music capital in the world. I heard an artist by the name of Jeff St. John, who I think I rate as high as Rod Stewart or Joe Cocker or anybody. It's just a question, really, of people here realizing what they have here and exposing it on the radio and not giving so much attention to overseas records. And I, I think what's going to happen, really, that now with the recording studios becoming just as good in, in Australia as they are anywhere, is that they're going to have to, once they really get some big hits in Australia by local, by local artists, it's going to happen in Australia, and first thing you know, all the major record companies are going to be right down here, and it's going to make uh, Australia music capital. And with the advent of supersonic planes, it's not going to be difficult at all.